started. I know now all of you are ready and excited about the talks we are going to have delivered by Peri and Silur. Uh, it's great to have all of you here. Uh, this is going to be our last meetup in December. Just for the newcomers, we are Open Blockchain Workshop Series. We intend to be a technical meetup series monthly organized in Budapest and uh, so we are not get going away, uh, giving away any financial advices like what to invest in and things like this. We are here for the tech um, and we want to learn from each other, from our regular speakers and other uh, very welcome speakers. And yep, I give away to my co-founder. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Steve. Uh, just a few more words about uh, I would like, we would like to say thank you for all of you guys for this year because this was actually the first year when we delivered this Open Blockchain Workshop series and it's really good to see the, the faces who, are, who have been here during the whole year and thank you for all the participation and all the guest speaks and uh, at, just to make it official we would like to invite you guys to join us for a few beers after this event so we can celebrate it together. Thank Please you come. And with that, um, so we recently published a paper on uh, Lightning Network and financial incentives given in Lightning Network. Um, this is a joint work with Ferry, uh, Andres Bensur, who is a uh, chief scientist at Stucky. And uh, with that, I will, I'm very happy to welcome Ferry and uh, please uh, welcome as well Ferry. Good evening everyone, I am Ferenc Béres from the Hungarian uh, Academy of uh, Sciences. I am a PhD student in uh, Network Science. So today's topic will be a combination of uh, cryptography and uh, network uh, science as well. Okay, now uh, let's uh, start with the motivation uh, behind the Lightning Network. Uh, Lightning Network was intended uh, to solve uh, two major problems uh, related uh, to the blockchain uh, Bitcoin technology. The first one is the poor scalability, which uh, means that uh, in every second, uh, at most seven uh, Bitcoin transactions can be executed on chain. Uh, in contrast, uh, major payment providers uh, can process uh, several thousand transactions uh, in each uh, second. Uh, the second problem, uh, is related to uh, privacy. As you uh, well know, every Bitcoin transaction uh, is included in a public uh, uh, log, uh, which is called uh, the blockchain. And uh, once your uh, Bitcoin address can be linked to you personally, then all of your uh, transactions will be publicly available for the whole world. So these are two very, very uh, serious uh, issues. Uh, related to the blockchain technology. So that's why the Bitcoin uh, community has uh, high prospects for the Lightning uh, Network, which is a payment channel network uh, technology, and uh, it is intended to solve uh, both of these uh, problems. So today I will talk about uh, our uh, research and results uh, related to the Lightning Network. Okay, so uh, Lightning Network is a payment channel network. Uh, it is very popular. It has been around uh, for over uh, two years now. Uh, at uh, its current state, there are uh, thousands of uh, nodes on the Lightning Network uh, with tens of thousands of uh, payment channels between them. Uh, so this is a network, this is a graph where the nodes uh, can be entities, uh, users, and the links are the payment channels uh, between them. Uh, first, uh, I would like to give a quick introduction uh, to Lightning Network for those who are not uh, familiar with it. Uh, on this slide, uh, you can see a payment channel between Alice and uh, Bob. This payment channel has a uh, five uh, coin uh, capacity. Uh, the capacity on the Lightning Network is uh, measured in Satoshis, which is a fraction of uh, one uh, Bitcoin. Uh, payment channel uh, network uh, has a huge advantage, advantage uh, which is uh, every participant, in this example Alice, can pay uh, to every other node in the network who she can reach 
through a series of uh, payment channels. So in this example, Alice uh, will, will pay two uh, coins uh, to Carol, and the intermediary node, Bob, uh, will uh, route uh, Alice's uh, payment. So after Alice uh, sent uh, two uh, coins to Carol, uh, her individual balance will be one instead of uh, the initial state, uh, which was uh, three. Uh, the two coins from Alice will move to Bob uh, on this uh, on the first payment channel, and uh, you can observe a similar <coughs> scenario on the second uh, channel, when where at the end Carol uh, will receive uh, the two coins and uh, sh she will have uh, five uh, individual balance instead of the initial three. So this is the case. This is how payments are sent uh, across uh, the network. Uh, the interesting uh, part uh, starts uh, when uh, Bob uh, charges a uh, transaction fee uh, for this uh, routed payment. Uh, the fee uh, charged by Bob uh, has two uh, components. The first component is called the base fee. It is a constant fee uh, charge uh, after each transaction uh, routed by Bob. And the second part of the transaction fee is proportional to the transacted value. In our example, it was the two coins. So it is uh, very important that the transaction fee comes uh, from two uh, components. Okay. And uh, Alice will uh, send the transaction uh, fee uh, to Bob. So this is how the network uh, works. Okay, here is also a toy example. Uh, there are multiple nodes uh, on the network and there are payment channels uh, between them. It is uh, interesting to note that on the Lightning network there is a source routing, which means that if Alice wants to execute a payment, for example to Frank, then she can specify the exact route in which she would like to send the payments through the network. It uh, could be the cheapest pass uh, to Frank, it could be the shortest pass, or she can specify any custom uh, pass. Uh, the only requirement is that uh, it, needs to read, it needs to reach Frank in order to uh, send uh, the payment uh, through the network. But uh, there could be uh, problems with it. Not necessarily every payment will succeed uh, on the Lightning Channel, for example, if Alice would like to send four coins to Frank, we can see that uh, at this current state, it is impossible because Alice can send the four coins to Bob, then Bob can transfer it to Carol, but from Carol, this uh, four coin payment cannot uh, reach Frank because Carol doesn't have four coin outbound capacity on the channel uh, linking to Ella or the channel linking to David. So there could be problems on the Lightning Network uh, as well. Okay. So, so there's only an outbound capacity, right? Is there an inbound capacity? Uh, yes. Uh, when, when there will be uh, a payment sent, for example, from Carol to Ella, the requirement in that direction is the outbound capacity of Carol on that channel. Uh, so, let's uh, say it again, uh, I call, uh, so the individual balance is the capacity on one side of the channel and the total capacity of the channel is the sum of the individual balances on a given channel. So these are important uh, definitions. Okay, uh, I would like to uh, talk about the financial incentives. Uh, as well. Uh, on the blockchain, uh, it is a well-researched area uh, whether the miners uh, are incentivized enough to take part in the protocol, um, as well as there are papers on the transaction fee market. So the on-chain Bitcoin technology has been researched uh, very well over the last years. But um, for the Lightning Network, uh, to the best of our knowledge, there was no uh, paper that quantified the financial incentives of the router entities, whether they get enough uh, fees 
from the routing uh, fees in order to uh, participate in the network uh, in the long term. So it is, it, I, uh, according to us, it is very important to understand whether they can get enough uh, money from transact from uh, routing uh, transactions. Okay, so that is why we chose uh, this uh, research uh, topic. Okay, now I would like to talk about our main uh, contributions. These are as uh, follows. The first uh, contribution uh, was uh, that we quantified uh, the financial intense, uh, incentives of the router entities. We also observe some privacy issues uh, related to the topology of the Lightning Network. Uh, we conducted a dynamic network analysis uh, on over uh, more than one year long uh, Lightning Network data. And uh, finally, we implemented an open source uh, payment channel network traffic simulator. It was our uh, main uh, key in the analysis of uh, the Lightning Network uh, data. Later, uh, I will uh, talk about why do we need to simulate payments on this network, but uh, let's first uh, talk about the data. Uh, we have uh, more than one year uh, Lightning Network data from uh, Antal Lacanes, and uh, using this data, we managed to observe uh, the opening and uh, the closing of Lightning Network channels. Uh, you can see uh, the number of nodes, uh, the number of payment channels, and the amount of Bitcoin bound in network capacity uh, over time. So at the current state of the network, there are several thousand nodes with 10,000 of uh, edges, and you can see the um, amount, million amount of Bitcoin, or, or the Bitcoin, just the bit amount of Bitcoin that is bound in network capacity. Uh, we also observe several uh, graph uh, properties uh, over time, like the average diameter of the nodes in the Lightning Network, as well as the effective uh, diameter. There was, very, there was one interesting uh, graph uh, property, which is called uh, transitivity. It measures the fraction of triplets that close uh, a triangle in the network. Uh, you can see that uh, the transitivity in the Lightning Network is much higher than the transitivity in well-known uh, random graph models like the Erdős-Rényi graph model and the Borabási graph model. We generated graphs from these models with the same size like the Lightning Network, and that's how we could compare the transitivity uh, compared to these well-known uh, models. Okay? Uh, I would like to note uh, that the magnitude uh, of the transitivity in the Lightning Network is similar to the transitivity uh, in social networks. It is very surprising because in the social network it is understandable that if Alice, if Alice and Bob and friends and Bob and Carol have friends, then probably Alice and Carol will be also friends. So this is uh, how uh, social networks uh, usually uh, work, or it is a good example of it. But uh, in case of transaction networks, like like Lightning Network, which is a payment channel network, uh, there shouldn't be necessarily a node between them, because if Alice can execute a payment to, uh, through Bob to Carol, then, then um, there is maybe really no need for this additional channel. But uh, you can observe that uh, this phenomenon exists uh, in the Lightning Network. Uh, triangles are, 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 are usually closed due to the high uh, transitivity. Yes? Do you consider somehow the, the network, uh, the edge capacity in the transitivity? Or no, uh, for this case we only consider the network structure without any uh, capacity requirements. Um, there was another uh, experiment uh, that, we, that we measured. Um, it was about uh, new uh, channel uh, 
uh, arrivals. For each new uh, <coughs> payment channel in the network, we calculated the distance between its end nodes. For example, let's uh, say that this is the latest uh, payment channel between Alice and Carol, and when this uh, new channel arrives, the distance between the end nodes is uh, 2. Okay? And we measure this uh, for every uh, payment channel in the network, and on this histograph you can see that most of the uh, new channels indeed close a triangle, which is, which is uh, very strange uh, for, for transactional networks. Okay. Uh, also a considerable amount of the channels uh, reopens a connection between nodes, so when the distance is one, it's really just a multi-edge uh, uh, in case of Alice and Carol. And we denoted uh, in the distance infinity when uh, there was no uh, pass between the end nodes of the uh, new uh, payment channel. Okay. So now I would like to move on the simulation part because, uh, as I mentioned before, we implemented a traffic simulator uh, for payment channel networks. So why do we uh, simulate? Uh, first of all, we would like to mimic the daily uh, payment and traffic on the Lightning Network uh, in this uh, experiment. And the problem behind that is that uh, only the network structure and the transaction fees are publicly available uh, data. So these were the two properties that we could uh, incorporate or, or take into consideration during our experiments. Uh, and unfortunately, the exact payments, as well as the individual node balances, capacity balances are not publicly uh, available in the uh, data or for uh, people. There is an important uh, note here, uh, because um, the traffic can be observed for a node, uh, but it's a very special case, because every node in the network can observe only the payments that uh, it routed. So he cannot uh, see the whole uh, payment history or the payment amounts in the network, just the traffic related to uh, his node in the network. So in our case, uh, uh, we couldn't uh, use this information because we doesn't operate any Lightning Network node. We could just rely on the network structure and the transaction fee data uh, that we extracted uh, from the data. So that's how simulation comes uh, into view. Okay. Our simulation uh, is special in a way that we collected uh, some external data to implement the network uh, structure and the transaction keys. Namely, this is information about the available service providers on the Lightning Network, and you, you can download this information from the 1ml.com website. Uh, you can see uh, groups uh, for different groups for these merchants or service providers. You can buy, for example, t-shirts or stickers or, or maybe even pizza on the Lightning uh, Network. So this is just a few uh, examples. We collected uh, the addresses of uh, merchants from this extra external data source and we designed our traffic a simulator in a way that payments uh, with high probability will be sent uh, to the merchant nodes that we collected from this external data source. Approximately we have uh, uh, 170 merchants uh, in the data, uh, at least at the time when we, we conducted our experiments. <coughs> okay, and uh, with a small uh, probability payments can be uniformly random in the network because, of course, not all of the payments can uh, relate uh, to a merchant or a service provider. So this is the general overview uh, of our traffic uh, simulator. Now let's see uh, the model parameters. 
in each uh, and every uh, experiment, we sample uh, tau uh, random payments, uh, and each payment uh, will have a constant uh, uh, payment value in Satoshi's. It is denoted by uh, alpha. Okay, for these payments. We sample the sender nodes uniformly at random from the whole uh, network, uh, but we have a restriction for the receivers in the simulation. There is a parameter epsilon, which controls uh, the fraction of merchants among the randomly sampled uh, payments. So, uh, namely, uh, we have at least epsilon times tau merchants among uh, the sample the transaction endpoints. So this is how the simulation works, and the remaining transaction endpoints are uh, sampled uniformly at random. So if you have a look at this uh, figure, the black uh, arrows represent uh, payments that has merchant recipients, and the uh, red uh, payments are uh, the, the endpoints of the red payments have uniformly randomly sampled uh, endpoints. So this is uh, the main idea. It, uh, is there any uh, justification for this model? Uh, yes, I will, I will talk about it uh, in the next uh, slide. There is one more important thing to add. In our simulation, we always choose the cheapest uh, pass between a sender and a uh, receiver. Okay. And now comes the validation part, which is uh, very interesting. Fortunately, uh, there was a blog post about one of uh, the most important routing entity of the Lightning Network. Um, it was about alambic.com, who has approximately uh, 25 nodes in the network. You can see these orange boxes. These represent uh, the nodes of uh, LNB. And uh, there, is, uh, there is a important thing to add. Uh, this entity owns uh, at least half of the total network capacity. Uh, so if we add uh, the capacity borne by these nodes, then, then it uh, accounts for most of the Lightning Network uh, capacity. Okay. And based on this uh, post, uh, we can assume that the daily uh, traffic that lmb.com nodes route in, uh, usually route a day is between two and uh, 300. And the estimated uh, daily income of this entity uh, is uh, between five and 10,000 uh, Satoshis. Okay. So uh, this is the information that we use for the validation of our simulator. And uh, we simulated uh, payments over uh, 40 days, 10 times. And we found that uh, with these para parameters, uh, we, we, we could estimate a similar uh, daily traffic and daily routing income uh, from the LM big nodes in the simulation. So that's why we uh, say that according to our experiments, the estimated uh, current uh, state of LN is uh, close to the scenario when on a daily matter there are a few thousand transactions, they are micropayments, I mean it is uh, 60,000 satoshis, but it is approximately uh, five uh, dollars. Uh, Okay, and most of the payments are uh, going to uh, merchant uh, nodes in the simulator. Okay, I would like to talk about an easy characterization of the routing uh, incomes uh, in case of uh, Lightning Network or, or, or any other payment channel network. Uh, let's assume a theoretical scenario uh, when the payment probability is uh, uniform between any given node pairs. In this case, uh, we would expect 
that the routing income of nodes with high between the centrality uh, would also have a high daily uh, routing income. So between a centrality measure uh, measures the fraction of shortest paths that are going through a node. And uh, if you have a node with a lot of shortest paths crossing it, then one would expect a high routing income for this node due to the topology uh, of the graph. So we estimated uh, daily income for the nodes of the Lightning Network and we uh, measure the correlation uh, of our estimation with the between a centrality score of the network, of the Lightning Network graph, and we got a high uh, correlation in case of betweenness, um, which is also a sign of uh, a validation. Okay, but there is there is one interesting uh, uh, thing here. If you change the fraction of merchants in the simulation, then this uh, correlation decreases. Uh, let's, understand, let's uh, understand uh, why such a thing would happen. When epsilon is uh, zero, it is the case when the payment recipients are sampled uniformly at random without any restriction to the uh, service providers in the Lightning Network. Uh, and we can see that the correlation is the highest in this case, because it is uh, very similar uh, to this theoretical scenario when the payment probability is, is, is uh, uniform with, uh, or equal between any given node pairs. And when we centralize the network traffic uh, towards uh, the merchants or the service providers, then um, we are getting uh, further from this uh, theoretical scenario. And uh, we, we, we can say that it could be uh, much more similar to the real case when people uh, spend their money uh, at the service providers. Okay. So that's how the simulation comes in. Uh, between the centrality uh, fails to capture the routing uh, incomes in case of centralized traffic uh, towards merchants. <coughs> now, uh, I would like to show you uh, estimated routing incomes uh, in case of relevant router entities in the network. Uh, I have already talked about Alambic.com, who has uh, 25 nodes in the network, but there are some other uh, important entities <coughs> as well. Okay, in the first uh, figure, you can see uh, the estimated in income uh, in relation to the simulated number of transactions. And uh, as I stated before, according to our experiment, uh, it is the estimated current uh, state of the Lightning Network, but we can see that if we uh, generate more transactions, then the routing income of the nodes uh, scales uh, with this change as well. On the other hand, we also investigated uh, how the routing incomes would look like if the amount of each uh, simulated transaction would increase significantly. Uh, the pink box is also the estimated current state when each simulated transaction has approximately five uh, dollar uh, payment value, but uh, the node routing incomes increase if this value gets uh, higher. If you remember the transaction fee formula, then you can conclude that the slope of each line uh, is in connection with the average fee rate that the given entity uh, asks for uh, his uh, transactions because it is present in the uh, second component on the transaction fee. And there are nodes in the network uh, who ask for approximately zero uh, fee rate. And that's why this line is flat and the other lines are not. Okay, uh, so in the previous uh, slides, we saw that uh, the estimated daily income uh, for nodes is quite low. 
it is at most uh, a few hundred satoshis, which means that it is around uh, five and seven uh, US dollars uh, per day. So what uh, can a node do, or, or what will happen if the number of transactions or the number of payment value will increase? Okay, so let's see. We were experimenting uh, with magnitude of uh, higher transaction uh, and magnitude of higher uh, payment uh, amounts. And uh, we measured that the fraction of payments that can reach the destination, uh, uh, so the fraction of uh, payments will increase in case of heavy traffic or high transaction value. As you remember for the earlier example, uh, we, we saw that if Alice want to send four coins to Frank, then, then she cannot do it at the current state of this toy example. Uh, so that is why her payment fails in the, in the Lightning Network toy example. Uh, and we estimate that at the current uh, state of the Lightning Network, approximately one third of the payments uh, fail according to the simulation, but it will get much higher if we increase the amount of traffic or the amount of uh, payment value. Okay, and you can see a similar behavior for the average payment pass length. So the current state is it is approximating to be around uh, three length three, which means that there are two hops in the payment that route the payment, uh, and uh, this average pass length also increase with heavy traffic or high uh, transaction volume. Okay, now I would like to talk about uh, the profitability of central uh, routers. In this table, you can see six entities with the highest estimated daily uh, income and the current uh, state of the network. Uh, there are parameters uh, for these entities that are extracted from the data. For example, the amount of Bitcoin bound in network capacity, as well as the average uh, transaction fee that he asked uh, from the transacted uh, payments over the time interval that we uh, examined. And there are uh, parameters uh, which are estimated uh, with our uh, Lightning Network uh, traffic uh, simulator. So that it is uh, estimated daily income, daily traffic routed through the given entity. And we can calculate uh, an annual return of investment for these uh, entities, which is uh, the estimated income over a year and uh, divided by the total amount of uh, capacity bound uh, on the Lightning Network. So you can uh, see uh, the revenue that a given uh, entity uh, can produce over a year by, by routing uh, transactions in the Lightning uh, Network. Okay. There is an example, uh, this entity, romper.com, who achieved a 5% annual uh, ROI. You can see that uh, it is a result uh, of uh, multiple uh, choices that this uh, entity applied. First of all, he uh, bounded a moderate amount of uh, Bitcoin in network capacity compared to, for example, Rompert uh, Alambic.com, who I mentioned before, owns uh, more than half of the total network capacity. Uh, so it is an interesting comparison. Uh, on the other hand, this entity uh, asks much higher transaction fees compared to uh, other central router nodes. He has also a considerate amount of uh, traffic and uh, the combination of these uh, choices or, or, or uh, uh, parameters of the entity resulted in a very, very good uh, annual return of uh, investment. Compared to other nodes, 
uh, he has much higher annual uh, investment than other central routers need to increase their uh, transaction fees significantly in order to reach the annual 5% uh, uh, return of in investment. No, uh, I would like to talk about uh, payment privacy in the Lightning Network. Uh, it is the final uh, experiment uh, that we that we executed uh, in this uh, research. <coughs> Uh, first of all, let's see uh, an example. What is really the problem? There is a payment from Alice to Bob, which is routed through this given uh, router. Uh, this is a one-hop payment, so there is only one intermediary node in this payment. Due to ONIO routing, which is a, a privacy feature of the Lightning Network, this router cannot know whether this payment really came from Alice, or just one of her neighbors. Uh, it, it is the same scenario for the recipient end. So this router uh, cannot know whether this payment is really going for Bob or just a neighbor uh, of uh, him. OK. The interesting uh, part uh, starts when we take uh, the payment amount into consideration. Because uh, let's suppose that this payment uh, was uh, 200 uh, US dollars and we know that channels that doesn't have uh, at least this amount of capacity cannot forward this uh, payment in the Lightning Network so uh, the router can conclude that if Alice doesn't have any channels uh, with at least this capacity to her neighbors, then this payment definitely came uh, from Alice. And this is the problem. So in case of uh, payments with, with high payment value, the router nodes uh, can uh, has, has the possibility uh, to de-anonymize the payment uh, senders, as well as the payment uh, receivers, if both doesn't have uh, high uh, capacity channels as well. Okay. Now we would like to uh, quantify uh, somehow uh, the privacy uh, probability, which you can see is clearly in connection with the uh, node degree in the Lightning Network. Uh, the blue line measures the probability that a given node has degree at least. Uh, given threshold uh, and after removing uh, small uh, uh, capacity channels from the network this uh, probability decreases so you can see from this figure that it is very it, it is much harder to uh, hide uh, high uh, payment value uh, transactions in the lightning network OK, so the problem uh, is really present when the payment was executed uh, on a short pass. And in our experiments, uh, we see that uh, the amount of uh, uh, payments with, with, with length 2, which is exactly the case when there is just one intermediary node in the payment, is approximately 17%. Uh, when uh, the endpoints in the simulator are sampled uniformly at uh, random. So epsilon was this uh, parameter. And uh, when the payments in the simulation are centralized or sent towards merchants with high probability, then the fraction of uh, short payment pass will increase significantly. So this is really a problem because it is close uh, to the approximated current state of the Lightning Network when the payments are sent to merchants with high probability. But uh, this also uh, means that there will be a, lo a lot of uh, short payment paths in the network. And the router node 
uh, has the possibility to de-anonymize uh, these uh, payments. So that is why uh, we proposed uh, a genetic algorithm uh, which could improve uh, privacy in case of the Lightning Network. I would like to uh, tell you the general idea behind this uh, algorithm. Uh, first of all, let's say that there is a cheapest path from Alice uh, to Carol through Bob. This payment path has only one intermediary, which is Bob. Okay, we would like to send a payment on a longer path, uh, and, and this way we could, uh, maybe we could uh, say that on a longer path, the probability of the is is uh, less than on a shorter path. Okay, the, and the algorithm uh, works uh, in a way that given a short path, we try to inject and nodes uh, randomly. This way we will generate a lot of uh, candidates and over multiple iteration uh, we mix these candidates uh, and after the iterations uh, finished uh, we find a payment pass from Alice to Carol which is uh, longer so it is it has at least two intermediary nodes uh, it may not be the cheapest pass uh, with length free, but uh, it could be a close uh, 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 pass. Okay, and uh, we in, in the rest. Yes. So does that mean that you can specify uh, some cost that would uh, ad admit the software and the uh, select the uh, Give a measure of the privacy would be increased. Yes, yes, that is what we are trying to do uh, because in this case there was one router intermediary who could uh, probably de-anonymize the sender and the receiver. We try to inject other routers, uh, also uh, with a high degree. They are probably uh, very popular and central routers, and uh, in this case. In the middle of uh, the transaction, it is uh, with high degrees, uh, the privacy of the payment pass uh, increases significantly. That's, that is why we try to inject uh, more and more router nodes into the payment pass. Yeah, you're suggesting that uh, each client would be able to configure the uh, allowable loss of, uh, of um, fee to the uh, Loss of money due to additional transaction fees, mm -hmm. uh, such that some given level of anonymity would be attainable. Yes, yes, we, we measured uh, the changes. The question is using every client would configure this uh, uh, level of desired anonymity. Yes, in a way, for, for high value transactions, uh, it would be. Uh, a good choice because you could uh, achieve higher privacy for your high value uh, payments. Did you use a differential privacy metric for the genetic algorithm or, or how do you quantify privacy other than differential privacy? We measure it based on. Uh, yeah, it's the probability of uh, a router node pinpoint any two uh, nodes. So 50 is like. Uh, the, the optimal maximum privacy and the, the percentage on the graph is the bias or, or how mm. on that graph. Genetic algorithms need also a cost function. How did you express privacy in a cost function? We only measure the payment pass cost uh, in the genetic algorithm. So ah, okay. we, we, did, we didn't uh, consider the preferential uh, privacy. We were just uh, measuring privacy through no degrees. Okay, just a side comment. So, um, differential privacy has nothing, it, it, it's yeah. not applied here. It's only so yeah, that's K anonymity. So, here privacy is only measured as the degree of the node. Okay. Because your anonymity set is your neighbors, essentially. You can, it's also called like K anonymity or plausible deniability. Okay. Like uh, if you go back one slide. Uh, one more. 
So in that case, like Alice could plausibly deny that he is the originate. She is the originator of the uh, payment. She could say, "Hey, I'm not the sender of the transaction. One of my neighbors is the sender of the transaction." Okay, so, so it's more it's like, like a it's not um, differentially private. It's a correlation based something. Yeah. yeah, it's called okay. K anonymity or yeah, plausible yeah. deniability. It's a different privacy uh, guarantee. Yeah, I get. So, what do you think what we have to be more popular? Most likely, it will get slightly better, but um, slightly. Yeah. So you I, I mean, it's it's uh, you cannot really expect people to have many uh, many payment channels. So obviously, certain level of centralization is is foreseeable, and uh, therefore, I don't really see it will it will get better, even if the Lightning Network will be more popular, because most of the people have will have low degree. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just my personal opinion. Additional question. Uh, how do you see the uh, uh, level of anonymity growing if every client would uh, simultaneously in the network uh, choose to have longer paths? Because, uh, you know, if everyone chose the shortest path or something, then there would be not as much transactions going through a single node. Whereas if everyone attempted to uh, wrote the, would be, uh, the transaction all around, then everything would be quadratically more digested and congested. Yes, yes. That, uh, uh, channels in the network uh, may uh, deplete uh, more often if uh, there would be an increased amount of traffic of the, uh, due to the high uh, or due to the longer uh, paths uh, and according to my idea uh, this routing would um, also uh, help uh, the routers achieve uh, higher daily routing uh, incomes as well because more routers would be included in each transactions and and there would be uh, more uh, transaction fees that they can charge in the network. So this kind of routing can help the senders of the uh, nodes to achieve higher uh, privacy, as well as the router nodes to achieve higher daily routing incomes. And uh, about the, about the, in this genetic algorithm, do you consider that other nodes may also be using this algorithm? Mm, as, as, as I mentioned uh, in uh, our experiment, we were, um, we were always uh, routing transactions on the cheapest path in the simulations. So there could be nodes in the real world right now who are uh, trying to route their transactions on suboptimal longer paths, but that is what we cannot extract from the data because the payment, exact payments are hidden from us. We can only observe the yeah, we'll network the structure. Solution, we'll see what happens. Yes, we, we run the simulation and uh, I can only uh, say that uh, if we use uh, this uh, genetic algorithm to recommend longer uh, paths, then the mean uh, cost that the transaction senders are paying for their transactions increase only uh, marginally. So this is the state when there is no uh, genetic algorithm involved uh, in the simulation, every node uh, sends the payments on the cheapest pass. So you can see the state here, as well as here, the median uh, cost of the transactions. And if we inject uh, more routers into these payments so that in the last uh, state, every payment pass uh, Con, uh, has a length at least six, then the average uh, cost that the senders has to pay uh, is all uh, increase only marginally. So it is in calculated in Satoshi. So if you have a look at that, it is only a marginal increase. So according to our experiments, it 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 it, it may be a wise, wise choice for payment senders to use this algorithm to send their payments or longer pass because their uh, payment privacy 
would increase or may uh, increase uh, and they uh, wouldn't need to pay much higher uh, fees uh, using these long uh, payment paths. Okay, so I would like to conclude uh, what our uh, Lightning Network uh, traffic simulation offers. First of all, uh, you can estimate the daily uh, node traffic and node routing incomes based on the network uh, structure and the available uh, transaction fees. Uh, you can also uh, execute some kind of uh, transaction fee optimization, which is detailed in our uh, paper. Uh, you can use uh, the simulator uh, to enhance uh, privacy for your payments by by uh, recommending uh, or using longer payment paths and we may generalize these results to other payment uh, channel uh, networks because in our experiments we only uh, experimented with, with the Lightning Network but there are other payment channels who were very similar uh, to uh, the Lightning Network. So thank you for your attention and uh, I can answer additional questions. You can see the link uh, to our uh, archive paper and uh, you can uh, find the uh, implementation of the traffic simulator on GitHub. Thank you. So do you have any more questions? Yes. Yeah, perhaps just one from my side. Uh, so in the return of investment calculation, uh, as an investment, you regard it practically the logged money. So the channel capacity. Yes. Uh, what happens if you consider for investment just the hardware that you buy and the electric electricity that you operate? Uh, we consider that. Um, so here is the formula, uh, and uh, we only uh, calculate it for the bound amount of Bitcoin of the entities. And we think that uh, the use of electricity is, is, is negligible compared uh, to the bound amount of uh, Bitcoin. But uh, for the hardware price, uh, I don't know. Uh, the return of investment will decrease if we add these additional factors. Yeah. So as I understand practically, if you love the money, you get it back. That's for sure. So that's cryptographic guaranteed. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So uh, then practically as an investment, I would say I got two investments. One is locking the money, getting something back. The other one is paying the hardware and the electricity. And I might get something back or I might not get something back. So it's like two different risks of investment. Yes. Ac according to the current state of the Lightning Network, we think that uh, there is only a little uh, factor that you get back. So the return. So this is the daily income over here that you get back from locking your uh, resources and, uh, and the income that you gain by routing transactions is, 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 is negligible. So that is why we observe very, very low uh, annual ROEs and if we have these additional factors, the hardware and the electricity it decreases much more. Okay. Personally, I would say that hardware costs are not the bottleneck. Yeah, like a, having an, a running routing node is not like mining on layer yeah, one. It's so sure, but you know, I mean, if I if I run a if I run a Litecoin node, then basically what I have, I lock my money. So, but that's not the investment because it's something that's I, that I get back for yeah, sure. But you could invest so, it in stocks. Yeah, yeah, it's an <laughs> opportunity cost. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not exactly a stocks because stocks are risky. Uh, this is not risky because it is guaranteed that I get my I get my locked money back. So what I risk here is basically the hardware cost because I set up a hardware, I pay the electricity, and then it's not sure that I get anything for that electricity and for sure and for that and for that hardware. That's a risky investment. But for that risky investment, the return of investment is much higher. So basically, this is two, two, two investments. One is practically a zero risk investment, which you can compare with banks. If I have my money in the banks, I got cheap practically. And it's less secure than locking in the Bitcoin network. So I post you on really early. Yeah, yeah. Since when are stocks not risky? Like, Maybe Stefano has some interesting. Yeah. I mean, you can run a Lightning node on a Raspberry Pi that costs 50 euros and consumes like a smartphone. 
So that investment is basically nothing. Yeah, but I mean, With comparing to that investment, I, I get back a lot. euros per month, you can run LMB tours. It's, it's really not big. Yeah. But maybe in that calculation, we also have to include uh, on-chain fees, because all the time you want to open a channel, you also have to pay on-chain fees. Mm -hmm. And now they are kind of cheap, but in some other periods they are not. So. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, something you spend and you have to get back from mm -hmm. the, that front. Okay. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yes, there is a question. I have a question. Um, did you consider private channels or do you have any estimations on how private channels could, could be involved in this? Because you said that. In the case of uh, two hop payment, if there is no incoming channel to Alice that has uh, this minimum capacity, then we can pinpoint Alice. But the payment could have been routed through a private channel, theoretically, which you cannot know about. We collected the uh, daily snapshots of the Lightning Network and... Yeah, but the, the, uh, the private channels are not up. present, yeah. Does that change something? Currently, you can't have a payment with different uh, public and private channels, right? So... Yeah, but if you, you are cannot the one who calculates the route, I mean... If I have a private channel with you and you have a public channel with him, I could build the route in a way that I pay him because I know that we have this private channel. No, we didn't uh, take it into consideration. Mm. Can you see maybe a way of estimating how many private channels in a, there might be? or? From the data that we used, I, I don't think so, because only, we only work with the publicly available data. Yeah. Any other questions? How uh, that we know that how many are fair? So we know that maybe the, the, the change through time, if you know how many nodes are there, and the payment payment ratio is changing then maybe we know that how many the ratios, yeah. you know, I don't know whether it is, it is a high uh, failure ratio uh, or not because uh, I, I, I uh, don't send payments with uh, Lightning Network so I don't know how often it occurs when you would like to send a payment and, and it just doesn't reach the destination it seems so high yes so Well, that's um, okay. So, sorry, but I don't think that it happened if it get more widespread. So, right now, there are certain people who are care about how they transfer money, how they have some privacy. So, they maybe they use more things to you know be private. So, they be, maybe they know how to do what happens if. A large portion of people are not know about that. Well, we saw that the model scales in, in various ways. So in, in all the, the graphics and with all the equations, we saw the it, it's not really uh, a question of scalability because yeah, but we don't know what, we, what, what kind of statistic we, we will have if the network is much larger and. Uh, so it's based like, on like new stuff. statistics, like the unknown unknown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously. So the thing is, it's okay. Um, it's a it's a very small network right now, as I see. Even if the network grows, the shortest paths will only grow logarithmically. Yeah, so. yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. But uh, what do you think? <laughs> well, the participants of the network would uh, surely need to invest maybe more money into opening channels because if the amount of transactions increase, then 
according to our measurement, there would be more failed payments. So, I mean, you mean because, yeah, right? Yeah, right. That means that they need some kind of investment in a way to be sure that they are safe, right? Yes, so the current state of the network would not be efficient enough for large uh, number of transactions. You can try to capture somehow how many are now using some kind of uh, how many of, what was the question? Are, are the payments are using the routing. The so routing. how many are intentional routing and not just you know but payments it's not, are not publicly available uh, data, so we only know the structure. The really payments, the senders and the receivers and are unknown and we can only simulate the payments based on the network structure. And we can assume that they use shortest pass or cheapest pass. Uh, that's what we can do. I mean, now the people are, who are using this network is you know, more like the investment people who are trying to understand, trying to use new ways. So they, they maybe they are knowing more about this kind of thing like you know cryptocurrency so maybe they are more have more knowledge i don't know so that's why i'm asking that uh, for regular people will be going in and just install something and trying to use that what do you have we can capture their behavior from channel openings and closings, but, but it is hard to conclude from just openings and closing to the amount of payments that they are really sending. So the payments are, are hidden from us. It's hard to conclude. So then let's thank the speaker again, and then we will have a 10 minutes of break. Splicing on the network, so we are, we are gonna uh, clarify what splicing is. So payment channels 101, basic, everyone knows. Uh, scalability, liquidity solution for micro microtransactions. We have the seven, here uh, the famous seven uh, TPS for Bitcoin. We need a solution for microtransactions. You fund a, a channel with your pre with a commitment. Commitment is a form uh, theoretically how you play. Uh, heads or tails uh, without trust issues with someone and with the generalization of these uh, heads or tails games uh, on hash commitments you can send money <coughs> so you have an on-chain transaction with a commitment locking you update the commitment arbitrarily off-chain however fast you can do on the network and then you close the commitment uh, on-chain again uh, nobody can cheat with this there are various forms of this, so this is the simplest forms uh, form of payment channels. Uh, this is not the Lightning Networks. It doesn't even, uh, not even Tumblebit, which is kind of an old form of payment channel, is that uh, dumb. Uh, we have the Time Lock channels. Uh, they have an epoch limit and an invalidation tree. The youngest one has to be invalidated first, and if we invalidate it, the older ones became uh, automatically uh, pruned that you can't subtract or update the commitment that has been already like with the same uh, as you tax those on chain uh, an advance for this because this is a limitation on the liveness on the lifetime of a payment channel the problem was that you had to interact uh, really fast with them or other or they the time lock will just expire and you have no means to otherwise interact with it so we came up with relative time locks so time only starts clocking when the last uh, transaction or the youngest one has been uh, withdrawn or settled from the invalidation tree so payment channel is 101 done Again, the Lightning Network shortcomings that was already uh, mentioned before. Uh, problem one is that you lock funds in a specific channel with somebody. Uh, you can only refund a channel by closing it and reopening it with uh, even more Bitcoins. If you have to take out something from it, you also have to close it. So it's no, 
it's kind of orthogonal to your original Bitcoin wallet. You have the Bitcoin wallet and the Lightning Node wallet, and you can't really interact the two funds, even though both of them are Bitcoins. You can't really move from your left pocket into the right pocket, even though it's the, your, the same money. Uh, it's kind of absurd. And large payments can't happen because it follows like the minimum outbound transaction rule that we already saw. So if I have to send a large amount of money to that end of the room, uh, it will most likely be rejected because someone along the routes won't have the necessary outbound transactions because it's for a, it's a micro, uh, micro transaction architecture. So the the terminology that we saw here are uh, different solutions for, for these problems. And we start with the generic collective term splicing. This is what uh, I've told you. When you put your Bitcoins from your left pocket to your right, when you move uh, on-chain Bitcoins to your channels and from your channels to your uh, main Bitcoin wallet, it's splicing in and splicing out. Splicing in is when you join a channel, when you refund the channel. Splicing out is when you withdraw something from a channel to the mainnet and uh, revoke your access from a payment channel. So I, I'll start with my favorite one. Uh, and, and actually, technically, the most interesting one is the channel factories. Uh, it, it's cha it changed the whole game from one-to-one -one payment channels fixed with, with someone to one to many uh, payment channels by introducing two ways of uh, allocation. Uh, the original paper calls this layer three. I personally don't think that that's really accurate. So because of my personal uh, bias or, or whim, I will call this layer 1.5 rather. Uh, Excuse me for the, the academic incorrectness, uh, don't calling it layer three. So basically you have two types of opening or funding a payment channel now. First, like original uh, Lightning Network, you fund a group uh, that can, that can uh, collaborate onto one-on-one -on -one payment channels later on the extra layer that we just introduced previously. So, First, I fund or, or everyone funds the whole room uh, for payment channels to be formed after. And the whole room can uh, make this uh, full graph with full connections from that, on that only one on-chain transaction rather than I have to open with each, each every one of you uh, another payment channel with an on-chain transaction with the fees, with the confirmation times and, and stuff. So uh, we already feel the scalability uh, capabilities of, uh, of this. And there are, of course, also two ways to close a channel because now we introduced another way to open it. So one way is that uh, in regular Lightning Network, everyone who participated in the channel signs it in a multi-party way. And if everyone agrees, someone uh, or everyone withdraws. The other one, the interesting part of this channel factory is that, is that you can close the upper layer, the layer three or the layer 1.5 channel, uh, zero cost and reopen another. That means that someone who's already done or just became irresponsive because of network issues or became malicious can leave the, the channel, the group that we funded without uh, col needing collaboration from all of us. So he, he can just leave and we don't have to withdraw anything or reopen the channel from uh, the remaining persons. Uh, yeah, uh, a graph of how this works. So uh, it's supposed to be coded in colors, but I have a slight problem uh, with seeing colors. So I, I will keep my distance uh, explaining the different parties here. So we can see where is the... How can I... Okay. So this is the part that happens uh, on chain. So we have the regular Lightning Network uh, uh, time lock uh, contract for the whole group. This uh, uh, contains all the parties here. And then the channel factories handle the part where individually you can decide whom you want to direct channel with. But this happens on chain with the commitments uh, schemes that we talked before. And anybody can leave from this and you don't need interaction from the other to open. And uh, settlements still can happen on-chain when you are 
uh, finally, this, when you finally decided to actually revoke your friends from the group, from the group, but uh, you don't need permission from. You want it to? In the, in the, if you go back one slide, in the funding transaction, all the inputs in, uh, needs to be equal amount of coins, or no, it's not a requirement. No, it's uh, that's not a requirement. Uh, in a, in another construction, it will be because we don't have a. A linear combination proof or, or we do have the implementers of the network just didn't want to implement it uh, yet but uh, here you don't need you don't have that and entering is also another yeah yeah it's uh, on this so part of your the answer is on this slide so these junk groups can be merged uh, with very little overhead, that means we have a room, a completely different room here, and nobody has a direct pine in or or there is no intersection in groups from the other one, and we are completely separate. Nobody can see each uh, the other, uh, other say room or or group. With minor overhead, we can merge, and there there will be a route to a payment uh, for another party on another room. Signature, uh, signature aggregation, uh, like in Shore, what we saw, can completely uh, erase this overhead. That's already negligible. So adding members uh, is, is actually you just buy coins from the people who uh, allocated the whole group. So it's not like uh, going on to a website or... or um, you, you have to extend the original hook on-chain transaction somehow because you can't, it's already confirmed. You basically buy someone's shares from this allocation pie to join the network and that becomes yours. But in, in uh, economically or, or game theoretically, that's not any different uh, than just buying directly Bitcoins from Alice or some of the participants. And uh, removing was already addressed. That removing is kind of the same. You uh, get your either get your uh, shares of the pie with an on-chain transaction, or leave it to the other uh, parties to do, do something with it. From the original paper, some scalability measures we saw that the uh, most most interesting and actually close to real world scenario is when you have ten users and between them. Uh, 45 channels with on-chain transactions uh, it, it would uh, be 10,000 bytes and with uh, it, it would be tenth, uh, one tenth of that with channel factories because we had to create only one uh, on-chain transactions for the whole group and all 45 sub channels or layer 1.5 channels happened off-chain and um, this this uh, doesn't actually represent correct me like what a, a network or a group of a real merchant node uh, can have so is this like a, a real world number uh, 10 or 10 and 45 for a merchant lightning node operator guys i expect it like, it's just a hunch, I was not part of the research, but I expect it to be much larger and maybe reach 99% or something. Two other interesting, because channel factories enjoyed kind of a hype on Twitter and, and uh, all kinds of media, so I selected two other less known constructions of uh, splicing in. Fundpara is one where you can have uh, parallel funding transactions for a payment channel. It's, uh, and, and by updating, uh, so on the interaction on the payment channel is by updating commitments you previously allocated and on each of those commitment update steps you can decide which one of the funding incoming parallel many funding transactions are uh, gonna use. The only rule is this that once you selected one in the update transactions that between those two parties you can select and merge to another because that's that's the same with forking. The the last uh, that we agreed on is valid, and that's the only. And the other ones get pruned. So it's like you have multiple allocations for a channel, and as the channel goes on, we start to speak. If we decide that oh geez, we we are above our uh, one of our agreed uh, thresholds or or funds, we need the I don't know ten more bitcoins for that. Then we select uh, during the 
during the the, the channel uh, interaction, the other funding transactions or the other block that funded in, uh, the transaction uh, merge all of our commitments onto that one and go on uh, until settlement with that funding transaction. So you can have multiple ones for that. In the same paper, there is another construction called Fund Cascade. Uh, it's kind of the same, only differs in linearity. So funding transactions can have other fun funding transactions as yeah. inputs. So the UTI, UTI uh, XO of a, of a creation, of a, a time lock creation for a, a channel can actually be used in another, in another channel. So if you decide that you are about the limits of the current channel, you invalidate everything in contrast with the previous one uh, when you move to another parallel funding transaction. Here you invalidate everything, make a new, trans uh, make a new funding transaction with the extra amount you want or the, the amount that exceeded the current limit and use the previous one uh, as an input. So here we see the old construction. Here we decided that we don't have enough funds to complete our protocol. We invalidate here everything. This is still valid. It's, it's confirmed in the, in the block. This happened off-chain in the box. We create a new uh, 0 0.5 fund, fund extra for the two that we already allocated. And in the funding transactions, we use this as an input. And now we have 2.5 uh, in our new channel by using this, uh, this old funding transaction. So two less known splicing in methods for payment channels. <coughs> Stop here. Uh, next terminology, um, confusion, submarine swaps. Uh, I, I like to view them as uh, splicing in where the sum of on-chain and off-chain uh, balances doesn't change. It, it's kind of true, but uh, this, uh, this approach didn't really enjoy too much, uh, uh, too much popularity. So it's more like uh, an atomic swap where only one of the parties participating in the swap are assumed to be a Lightning node user. So uh, atomic swap strictly restricting to uh, Lightning uh, network atomic swaps. So when you uh, need to really uh, fast exchange of Lightning, lightning uh, node Bitcoins to, from your original ones, this is a solution where you can do that, that only the receiving party or you has a Lightning node networks and not both of you. Uh, another thing that caused confusion with submarine swaps is that it, yes, it involves a trusted third party, but an untrusted one. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's UC secure. It means universal composability secure. That means that the untrusted third party only can do attacks to the constructions that would be otherwise uh, possible without the, the, the environmental effects of this trusted third party. So it's not much of a change. So how this works? Assume Alice and Bob have a one uh, zero channel setup. That means that Alice has uh, one Bitcoin in the, in the channel and Bob has zero. And he wants to deposit uh, half Bitcoin on his end. Bob sends in a, a traditional Lightning Network invoice to Alice and uh, set up a redeem script like this, where either uh, Alice provides the pre-image hash of the invoice uh, of Bob by paying, of course, the Lightning Network uh, uh, invoice, or Bob uh, signs the withdrawal transactions after the, the time lock. So it's, it's an HTLC uh, redeem script. So either uh, Bob redeems their coins after a time period, or uh, Alice opens the, the commitment by providing Bob's pre-image. Uh, Alice creates the contract from the script below, it, it's going to be a hash value, you, you publish it on the chain. Uh, Bob sends the, the funds, the 0 0.5 uh, amount of Bitcoin on chain, uh, traditional Bitcoin transaction, no lightning network. Still, Alice says the confirmation on chain, and now she pays the lightning network invoice. She gets back the, uh, she, she gets the the opening of the commitment in the form of a hash per image. And then from the previous 
contract that they both uh, agreed on and published on the chain. Alice provides uh, the opening uh, that, that from the result he, uh, she got from the Lightning Network node, and they exchanged, they, they made an atomic swap on Lightning Network with only one Lightning node in the network. Uh, and uh, the reason because bef the reason why I said before that the my approach uh, is that submarine swaps is a form of splicing where the overall balance didn't change because you you see it it, uh, it didn't is because currently there are experiments on how to incentivize it in the same way as Lightning Network to to operate an atomic swap node and there is actually one online I don't remember the URL maybe with the beers uh, or, or after the talk I'll, but there is an operating submarine swap website that you can use uh, like this. It automatically sets up the reading script for you and stuff. So the last one on our agenda uh, is how to send large payments on Lightning Network. So we saw that it's a microtransaction architecture and it's going to uh, stop somewhere because someone in the room will have less funds than what I would like to send to somebody. Uh, so we have um, uh, multipath uh, multi payments. For that, it's really straightforward. Rather than using a single route, so I, I launch all my funds on a single person to that and you will be my recipient, uh, I'll send a part of that here, a part of that here, another one here, and hopefully I can divide my original funds into so many pieces that everyone will have the means to pay uh, to, to pay for it. Uh, the, the upper part is from the, the original uh, emailing from Lightning Networks developers when the, the proposal for, um, for multipath payments uh, became a thing. It's gonna change most likely. They are gonna delete this unused 12 bytes because of some onion uh, stuff. So we have the the round, the next address uh, on on the hops amount, the check lock time uh, verification. Uh, they originally intended this 12 bytes I for like uh, authenticated and encrypted data, like arbitrary something for exchanges exchanges or something that you wanna. Uh, want additional metadata on your transaction and of course an age map for authenticity. So getting back on dividing my original uh, seemingly too large funds for lightning, lightning networks, I have this is my original funds that I split up into equal values. I should have uh, noted this. So g back to your questions, this is the part where you can only use equal amounts because everyone in the uh, in the room, we will have to check that they didn't receive two parts with different amounts, because the other uh, version of this uh, or, or the other method to ensure security that you don't exceed or uh, someone steals your money is by using a linear combination or inner product or or some homomorphic proof, and that's kind of scary to implement in C++, so the developers changed that, okay, we're not going to use homomorphic commitments <coughs> or Pylir and stuff, rather everyone will just check they can't receive uh, differing values. So we have a random ID, this is the ID of my whole transaction plan, uh, not not the orthogonal participants, so I, I want to send um, 10 bitcoins for, for each one or something. This uh, statement has an ID on the network. And we have a bulk uh, base pre-image randomly selected. We also split the base pre-image into another sum. These ones don't have to be separate amounts. And or, sorry, these also have to be uh, same amounts. And we have a deterministic non-random Oracle secure pre-image. Pre that means that uh, everyone has the input to uh, reconstruct or to construct uh, this this pre-image or, or no, not the pre-image. Uh, everyone has the means to reconstruct this value somehow. Uh, it's deterministic but from the uh, base, uh, base pre-image concatenated as a string or, or byte 
uh, bytes by the iteration. So we have m uh, splits from our from my original sum, and uh, from one to m, I select ri as a SHA or other kind of uh, hash as a base privilege concatenated with i. And at the end, I hash it uh, yet uh, another time because this is gonna be my uh, my commitment, my payment channel invoice that someone has to open with this value. And we are gonna have to make sure that everyone can reconstruct this base pre-image by adding together the values that I sent around the room. And uh, if, if uh, the protocol is correct, that we see that yes, the sum will be present in the network, that means that you can reconstruct all of uh, these because this is just counting from 0 to m. You have the base pre-image as the sums. You can reconstruct the pre-image of the invoice ROI and you can claim the funds. So that's what we are going to do. We publish onto the Lightning Network uh, the ID that I want to send uh, 10 Bitcoins to East One. This is a, a, a uh, an event, this has an ID on the network, and as how many parts did I split my original funds into, and all the, all the split values. On the receiver side, we collect these values and iteratively, as, as, uh, as fast or, or as the value comes into my node, I add it to the base per image, and after receiving n parts, I should reach the, the same linear combination, because we assume that all the parts uh, have to uh, has to have the, the very same amount, so nobody can uh, cheat at the part that you're gonna... I don't know if uh, I send 10 bitcoins, then nobody can cheat with 5, 5, uh, 4, 6 or something and then bias the whole network and take, uh, take some bitcoins for them. So you update the linear combination or the sum with the base, uh, and if you reached uh, n after an iteration, you have to reach the same base per image that I did. Then you count from zero to n, concatenate the the errors because you, now you have all the inputs for that, and you can uh, uh, revoke or uh, or withdraw and pay my Lightning Network invoice because now you are part of the or you have the the pre image for that, and now you profit. So. Yeah, uh, how to send large transactions on Lightning Network by splitting. And summary, slight overview, lots of stuff going uh, on this year. And it's just in Bitcoin, just on layer two. So lots of lots of research happened in, in blockchain for all for the problems we spoke previously. Uh, all of them has advantages, disadvantages, heavily under implementation. Uh, some of them stuck. I advise everyone to keep um, track of the Lightning Network developer main uh, mailing lists and, and the githubs on uh, how this changed because the, the multipath payments is under construction currently. This, is, this may not be the latest workings of now. Uh, the extra, extra onion blob that allows you so Lightning Network network utilizes the Onion routing like Tor, and they left some extra blobs or extra space in the Onion network for us to use. But uh, the Lightning Network developers uh, decided not to use this somehow. So this transaction value, the ID, the split numbers, and the split values will have to go somewhere else, and it's not public information yet where that goes. We can only mine it, I don't know, the next month or something from the mailing list or, or GitHub. So we saw how submarine swaps can make uh, atomic uh, swaps with only one node, splicing in and splicing out, uh, how to scale uh, numerous uh, Lightning Network. Is there any way on Lightning Network to revert to reaction? Revert? There is? I'm not sure. No, I don't think. No, I don't. I don't think there is a, a way for that. Uh, fun fact um, from the paper where where the I, there was a citation on the 
general factories pay, uh, paper that someone calculated that lighting network with ideal models, so not like the kind of model that the guys presented now here, but everything is ideal, every distribution is uniform, everyone is private, so the best case lightning network can uh, handle uh, 800 million users. I didn't look into the whole, whole research, but this was a statement from Darren. Now, having 800 million users in a payment channel would be already so much better than now, but still not the end. We want, like, there are 2 billion smartphones in the in the world out there. We want all of them to be be part, and that's, that's why uh, all of these Lightning Network and second layer scalability is, is uh, un underworks because we want all two billion of them have negligible communication and storage requirements. So yeah, thanks for the attention on the la layer two fun. And thanks for the year um, open blockchain. <laughs>
problem more than uh, crashing in a given moment. So if your phone crashes but you don't lose data, that's not an issue. But if you drop the yeah, phone actually, into a that's lake, what I, that's what I meant. If you drop the phone into a lake and the storage on the phone is lost and you don't have a backup for it, then that might for, be a problem. You know, uh, yeah, you know, uh, block of data didn't get properly uh, uh, written into the uh, person space where it was sent to the network or something like that. That's what I meant. Yeah, because in commitment schemes you sign uh, or, or both parties sign the same state and if I have a newer one than you because you lost uh, your storage then I still can, yeah, uh, I, I might be able to uh, get your funds because I have the latest valid state with your signature on my commitment. Uh, yeah, but there is another case when you somehow signal uh, that you want another uh, state update that's that's uh, an implementation issue uh, but yeah I, I get it now if i have a newer state on the commitment and you and then you lost uh, possession or, or or crash or something for too long and the htlc didn't time out and i'm evil then i can receive your ones yes thanks for the help okay Let's have some beers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>